Urban Outdoor Adventures, teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Hi everyone, it's 5.30 on a Sunday morning. I just dragged my good friend Jen here out of bed. We're heading out on Lake Ontario. We're going out on big water for big kings in a little boat. This week, Sean and Jen head out of Frenchman's Bay in search of Great Lake salmon. Frenchman's Bay is located in Pickering, Ontario, just 20 minutes east of downtown Toronto. They chose to launch off the beach, located on the west shore of the bay, for quick and easy access to the open waters of Lake Ontario. A convenient launch ramp used to be available out of the marina on the east shore of the bay at the foot of Liverpool Road. However, since the ramp was renovated in 2003, it has become difficult to launch there. Sean and Jen made their way out of the channel at the south end of the bay and headed straight out onto the main lake until they reached 100 feet in depth. Upon arrival at their starting point, Sean proceeded to set up the downriggers and rig the cut bait on the rods that he had prepared the night before. It is important to be organized when heading out into open water at this time to avoid missing the early bite. Pickering, Ontario is conveniently located on the east side of Toronto in the county of Durham approximately a 25-minute drive from downtown. Recent improvements have been made to the area, including boardwalks and park areas, making it a great urban getaway combined with a feeling of being in the country. An attractive aspect of Pickering is that it generally receives less fishing pressure than the other ports along the north shore of Lake Ontario. Other species, such as bass, pike, and abundant carp can also be found in Frenchman's Bay. Other species available to open water anglers, in addition to the abundant Chinook salmon, are rainbow trout, brown trout, coho salmon, and occasionally, lake trout. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Oh, look at him go. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like a bit of a better fish. I'm guessing just over 20 maybe. You see that? Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. I'll grab that. And we'll just scoop him up. There we go. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, he's over 20. Yeah, that's great. We broke our yeah, uh, awesome. 20 pound barrier. We're Probably five minutes from Pickering. Toronto's about 20 minutes over in that direction. There's plenty of salmon like this available on Lake Ontario. You just gotta get out here and enjoy them. We launched out of West Shore in Frenchman's Bay this morning, which is like two minutes from downtown Pickering. A few other options along the shoreline here. You've got Port Credit at the Credit River. You've got uh, Bluffers Park Marina, Ashridge's Bay, Port Darlington in the uh, east, and Whitby. Plenty of places to get your boat in. And as I say, we're in a small boat today. You don't necessarily need to be out in a big charter boat. Get out here and give it a try. I tell you, it's a lot of fun. Jen will vouch for that, right? Awesome. Whenever you catch one of these salmon, and you see a mark like this on the side, that's a telltale sign that a lamprey has been attached to this fish at some point. Lampreys are parasites. It's an eel-like creature that attaches itself to the fish. If you do catch a fish with a lamprey still attached, it'll often fall off right in the boat when you net it. If you do get a chance and one falls off, kill the lamprey. Don't kill the fish, release the fish, but kill the lamprey. They're pests. There he goes. I should point out, guys, if you're gonna come out here, why not try and win yourself some money or a boat while you're out here? 
There are two derbies that run through the summer. One starts in May called the $1,000 a day derby, and the other one starts in July, which is the um, Toronto Sun Salmon Derby. It used to be the million dollar derby. They've changed their format somewhat now. You can win a boat every week. Uh, the $1,000 a day derby will allow you to win $1,000 every day for 180 days. So go to your local tackle dealer or tackle shop, pick up a ticket, and may, hey, you never know. It's just a matter of time before you maybe get onto that big one and win yourself some good prizes. Good stuff. Yeah, he's still there. Come on. Yeah, he's still there? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, he's still there, he's on the top, see him? Yeah. Nice, look at him go! Wow. How's your arm? You okay? Chilling. You want me to help? Yeah. Okay, stand back, stand up on two feet. Brace yourself, put your legs a little further apart. Okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, yeah. oh yeah, he's good. And pull up. Reel down, oh, there he goes, let him go, let him go. As soon as that drag starts okay. going, we want to let the fish run. Okay. He's dictating to you when he's right. ready to come in. He's not as big as I thought, but he's a spider. Get the net, the downrigger out the way. We got him. All right, oh yeah, that's, a, that's actually bigger than I thought. That's Look great. That. That's oh, awesome. nice job. I'm going to get you to hold that up and we'll get a picture. Right. <sighs> yes. He's too long, I can't even get him in the frame. <laughs> Smile. Okay, we got it. A telltale sign to very easily identify a Chinook salmon, the inside of the mouth is entirely black. You get a rainbow trout or a coho salmon, they'll have a white inside of the mouth. Okay, let's get him back. I'm gonna take a minute here, guys, to show you how we rig these cut bait rigs in the downriggers. We're fishing in about 140 feet of water right now, and we're fishing fairly near the bottom, so I don't really need such a long leader. I put out about 30 to 40 feet there. Now, with the flasher, you get quite a bit of resistance in the water, so I like to put the line fairly far back into the clip to avoid it pulling out on you. Clip it in and disengage your reel. Put your thumb on the spool. Just slowly start letting it down. This one here we're gonna put down to about 115 feet over the 140 depth that we're in right now. You'll notice that I have the downrigger pointing out to the side. I have a swivel base which allows me to maneuver the downrigger back and forth. I like to set the downrigger cables and the cannonball off to the side slightly keeps them a little further apart, keeps them a little bit away from the boat. I'll even angle the back of the cannonball, bend the metal at the back to make it sort of swim out away from the boat. What you want to do when you get down to your desired depth is very important to take up the slack on the line. Don't simply reel the handle on the reel. Just pull it down gently and take it up with the handle simultaneously. You want to keep as much tension between the clip and the tip of the rod as possible to avoid having a big loop in your line. When you're fishing this deep, a lot of fish will hit, and when they come off, there's a lot of slack line there that needs to be taken up. So you want as little there to begin with as possible. Because what will happen is, if these salmon get a slightest bit of slack in the line, they'll spit the hook on you. Your electronics will become a very important part of fishing open water like this. We're fishing anywhere between 100 and 120 feet of water with our line set down around 105 and 95. What we're doing is we're using our GPS unit, Global Positioning System, in conjunction with our graph. What we'll do is mark the bait and the fish that we're passing through. The graph will tell us how deep the fish are, where the bait are adjacent to the fish. Generally, you want to be running your baits above the fish, not underneath them. The fish feed upwards. They always, they're always looking up. And we'll keep tracking through those waypoints. We'll set up a milk run as such that we'll work our way back through looking for those active fish. 
Fisher! Okay, Jen. It's a good one. There you go. It's all yours. I'll clear this other rod out of the way. Okay? Yep. You need the belt? Yep. This is where I get to put my hands around Jen's waist. Okay, lift up. Put it in. If it makes it easier to fight the fish, guys, put the boat in neutral. I mean, if there's no other lines down and you're not gonna get tangled, give the person who's fighting the fish a chance. Wow. Did you hear that real screaming, guys? That's what salmon fishing on Lake Ontario is all about. That's a good fish, that is. It definitely. Good girl. You're doing yeah. a great job there. How's he feel? Good. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's pulling. My arms are killing. Yeah. Are you naked? <laughs> <laughs> My arms are killing. I was trying to remember, guys, what depth the fish hit and what bait you were using on that rod. So you can replicate the pattern with your next fish. Are you okay there, Jen? <laughs> oh wow, he's got some power this fish. If you get tired, just say because we don't want to lose this fish. It's a good, good sized fish. Oh, he's off. Okay, no jerky move. No, Give me a favor, hold it. that top part. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> Keep it tight. Go, go, go. Real, 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 real. He's got slack line on you. Okay, my arms are killing. Keep breathing, keep breathing. How are your arms feeling there? Like massively on fire. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Yeah, lift it up. There he comes. Whoa, he's gonna go again. Oh crap. Okay, reel up, reel up. Oh, no, 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 just let him go. We don't want to put too much tension on next to the boat here. Let's see if we can lift his head up. Now reel, reel, reel. We got him. Look oh, at that baby! Awesome! Alright! That's definitely the biggest one. Good job. And I can't move my arms. You enjoy that? That was great. Yeah, oh, that was awesome. You wanna get the hook out? Yes. Your fish, definitely. you unhook him. Right. He was well hooked. Look at that, right down. Okay, what you need to do, get your pliers there. Just can't see in there. Oh yeah, let me grab. I can see from this side. Yeah, I can't see anything. Right. Pull it towards you. Alright. Put your hand further into its mouth. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Hang on. Okay, I think so. Massively disgusting, but worth it. Yeah, <laughs> massively disgusting. Very slimy. Okay, I'm gonna get a picture of you here. CPR, brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Smile. Good, gross. Say Chinook salmon. Chinook salmon, disgusting slime. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful fish it's though, It's great, right? awesome. It's, uh, let's get this guy back in the water. You can see the potential fun that's available out here. Surprisingly enough, a lot of people in this area don't even realize that there are salmon in Lake Ontario. That's what fishing is all about. Hey, slime Right me. there. All right. All right. <laughs> what a go, eh? That was great. Don't mind getting slime. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Bole H2 Optics. Jen and Sean's larger fish all came out of 100 to 140 feet of water. Large salmon were marked at 90 to 120 feet down, so cannonballs were set at depths between 80 to 115 feet. The flasher and cut bait presentations were let out to approximately 40 feet behind the boat and then set tight in the release clips. These highly effective presentations were trolled at speeds of 2.8 to 3.1 miles per hour. 30 pound test fluorocarbon leaders between flasher and teaser head were 6 feet in length. The lake bottom at this depth is generally quite featureless, so monitor your graph closely to locate schools of bait fish. If you find bait fish, mark the location on your GPS and circle around and through the area repeatedly. Watch for larger fish to appear on the screen. The salmon will generally be within close proximity to the bait fish. Salmon will generally attack from below. Productive flasher colors were green and glow with a chrome back. Teaser heads were green and white glow and blue and white glow. When fishing this deep, it is important to take up as much slack line between the rod tip and cannonball clip as possible while trolling. 
Another key factor to hooking and landing these deep water fish is to have razor sharp hooks. Be sure to set the hook hard and take up any slack line as fast as humanly possible. Weather conditions today were a mixture of sun and cloud. Winds were variable throughout the day. Surface water temperature was 68 degrees Fahrenheit and water clarity was good. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. A little tip for you guys. You see on the line here, we have what looks like weed or algae. It's actually spiny water fleas. What they do is as we're going through the water column, you'll go through groups of them and they'll attach themselves to your line. 30 pound test monofilament will generally keep them off. You can also get a line called flea ticker, I believe, that'll keep them off also. But if you do get them on, quick tip, as you can see, we can hardly reel this back in. Quick tip to get them off if you're fighting a fish, reel it right up and slap your rod on the water. As you can see, they're gone. A couple more up there, slap it again. If you're fighting a fish, don't worry. Do what I just showed you, and it'll help you get that fish into the boat. So I'll show you how we rig up the uh, cup bait. I've got 30 pound test fluorocarbon. It goes, uh, turns invisible under the water. It's a lot less visible than monofilament. You want about six feet. So I'll just do a two arm lengths like that. Cut it. Go through the top of the head on your teaser head, out through the hole in the bottom. Pretty simple. Eh? Mm -hmm. This is a number one treble hook. But to keep the head in place, slide toothpick up in here and just wiggle it in to the hole as far as it'll go trim it off and what'll happen is when that gets wet that toothpick will actually swell up so it'll actually make it tighter for you the flash is simply ties straight onto your main line now remember we put that swivel on first that goes right onto the clip of the flasher here and there you have your rig ready for your cup bait. What this flasher will do when it's in the water as you're trolling along, this flasher will basically make big circles, giving off flash, mimicking a salmon that's feeding on bait. And then what happens is the fish are drawn to it, and then what they see behind it is your teaser head with your herring strip. What that mimics is a fish that's been hit by a salmon that's feeding. Basically looks like easy pickings for the next fish that comes along. I'll show you how we rig the herring strips. Slide it into the head. Not that far. Take your toothpick. Straight through the hole. And just break it off. See the bend in the hook? Right there is where you, roughly where you want your tail of your cut bait to be. And as it goes through the water, it'll spin around, mimicking, as I said, an Indian bait fish. And there you go. You're ready to go cut bait fishing for salmon. If I didn't want to use the cut bait, what else could I use? And there's a whole variety of spoons and plugs that you can use in addition to or instead of the uh, cut bait, for sure. There we go. That's just a little guy, but give you a break from those big ones anyway. There he is, little fella. Okay, we'll try and if you can, put, point the rod over here. We'll bring him around the side and I'll just grab him. We can probably unhook this guy right, right beside the boat. This is what we call a shaker. That thing didn't even pull the, uh, pull the line out of the clip. So remember I was saying shakers? Yeah. That's a shaker. Okay, we'll just... Look him. He's gone like a bullet. Patrick Scholes of Gatineau, Quebec writes, how do you make a musky strike when he is following your lure to the boat? That's a very good question, Patrick. There are two techniques that I like to use every time I go out musky fishing. The first one is the 45 degree sweep. I'll cast out, reel it in just under the surface and as it's getting closer to the boat, and I'll put the rod actually in the water and do a 45 degree sweep. And they'll come up and crash that bait just simply because it's doing something different and erratic when it gets closer to the boat. The second technique is a very old one, but very effective. It's called the figure eight. 
If you see a fish following in, always make sure you're wearing your polarized glasses. Get your rod into the water. Don't be afraid to put your rod up to here if you have to. Get it in the water and do a big figure eight motion. You'll be surprised how many times those fish will hit a lure that close to the boat. I hope that's helped you, Patrick. Congratulations. Thanks for writing in. Your prize package is on the way. For instructions on how to enter our email bag contest, log on to our website and click on the email bag link. Well, everyone, that's all we have time for this week. I want to thank Jen for coming on the show today. Thank you. Did you have fun? I had an awesome time. Yeah, it was great. Excellent. We had some, we had some good fish. Fun. And I touched fish snot. You touched fish snot, yeah. Lots of fish snot. I want to try it all on my own tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Get it in and unhook Get it. The hook. Oh, yeah. Why not? She's a hands on girl, everybody. <laughs> That'll boost your ratings. Listen, guys, if you want any tips on anything that we've covered in the show today, remember, go to our website. We'll see you next week on Urban Outdoor Adventures.